Hello, and welcome to a Tabletop Bellhop Cardboard Coat Check. I am Mo Tuzno, the Tabletop Bellhop, your cardboard concierge, answering your gaming and game night questions and striving to make everyone's gaming experience better. Tonight, the question we're answering is, what's in the box in regards to Great Western Trail? This is the first edition of Great Western Trail, published by Eggert Spiel. Uh, this is the Canadian printing with French and English instructions of a game I have been aching to play since hearing about it. I did get to see a small demo of this game at one of my local game stores, but unfortunately I only got to watch it for a couple minutes and it just looked really cool. Yes, I am well aware that there is a second edition coming, including a whole trilogy of games, but what we're looking at tonight is the copy I got for my birthday, which is the first printing of Great Western Trail. If you're looking for the later copies, maybe we'll have a video for that eventually if I do pick up the new editions, but I'm sure there are plenty of other content creators out there covering that. So here we go. We are going to take a look at Great Western Trail. I'm going to cut the shrink off this, tip the camera down, and take a look at what's in the box. Here we have the box for Great Western Trail being cracked open by for the first time by me. On top, we start with the board. It's a big one. We are probably not going to be able to fit this all in the camera, but I can kind of show off what you can see here. So this is a board where you are going to start at the bottom of the board here and travel in a path up this way to eventually deliver your cattle way up over here. You're going to add more buildings in the way to make the trail more interesting after every run. So you're going to make more and more buildings, more and more places you can stop. you got a scoring track on the outside. you got all kinds of bonus scoring over here. You've got another track over here for based on the number of players. Nice four-panel board. Uh, Two-sided in the fact that there is artwork on the other side, but nothing else. Then we have the rule book, interestingly boxed backwards. So we're looking at the back of the box showing the final scoring. You can tell this is not a light game when you have this many ways to track final scoring. Not that it's overly heavy. So then we have the box. We're gonna flip through this pretty quickly. Uh, it's a little too big for my camera, so I am gonna zoom out just a bit. I probably should have did that while I was on the board, but that's fine. There you go, just so you can kind of see how big this is. Uh, one of the first things I love seeing here is examples of all the components broken out bit by bit so you know everything you get in the box. I love seeing that. Then we move on to the rules and look at all these callouts. Look at all these. This is talking about this. This is talking about this part of the board. That is a great rule book design right there where you have something pointing specifically to the board element you're talking about. Really dig that. Looks like we're going to get into a two column layout. No, one column, uh, one minor complaint. This is mainly because I'm getting to be old. That is a very small font. We'll throw that over here so you can kind of see it. That, that's some small text there. I might need a magnifying glass to read this game. That's not going to be a problem for anyone, but it is a problem for me. Uh, I really appreciate here some work that's done here to color code different parts of the rules. So you have a little heading showing the different colors they're going to talk about in each section. That's a nice bonus. Color coding rules is, makes it way easier to reference during play. Yeah, everything's nice, color coded. Showing off the various buildings. Lots of information though. And it's switching from single column to two column. Layout's not the best. It's, a, it's very busy looking. A little hard on the eyes. Lots of examples of the various cards in the game and tiles. And there we have it. Now we move on to punch boards. So these are, okay, so it's um, two attached to each other. that just came apart in my hands, which is awesome. We're gonna punch one of these coins. They punch pretty well. It's a little stuck there, but there's not really any extra flash on the edges here. Cardboard's pretty standard thickness for board games. We have a number of different tokens here. Uh, most of them two-sided. These ones aren't, but these ones are. Um, is it the same thing on both sides? No. So there's different abilities for each of these tiles on each side. And then we have a whole bunch of number one tiles that are all randomized here on this side. Completely different information. Then we move into more buildings, more tiles, more colors. And again, now we have number twos instead of number one. Same thing, the brown tiles are single-sided and the yellow tiles are two-sided. And then we move on to the French version of the rules. As I noted, this is the uh, Canadian printing of the game from Eggert Spiel. So we have the exact same instructions in French. For those of you who speak French, and a couple more punch boards. Um, something I do appreciate right away I can see here is the coins 
for each denomination are a different size. So the ones are about one half the size of the fives. It's a nice touch. Always appreciated. More people. These probably have threes. Yep, they have threes. And then we have a very basic trough insert. Not a huge fan of these, but at least it keeps the boards off the rest of the components. Uh, we have the bag of baggies, uh, except they're not a bag. We have an elastic around baggies. Again, I thank any publisher who gives me baggies to store their components. We've got a scoring pad. There's another indication of a heavier game when you get a scoring pad with your game. Uh, it just shows iconography, so that's nice. This is language independent, so I'm sure it's the same scoring pad in every version of the game. And you get plenty, more than the average person is ever going to use playing any board game, any modern board game. Uh, we're going to dig a little deeper to pull out some player boards. Some slight disappointment here. These are just thick card. These are not cardboard. I always prefer to have cardboard playing boards. It looks like you're going to put lots of different things on here. Those people we saw that were numbered one, two, three, and these are going to bump easily. I am going to guess offhand that there are people on Etsy that sell overlays to put on this to keep things in place, but this could have been better. I'm not overly, it, it's, it's to be expected. But I do prefer if these are at least card, and even better would have been if they're two layered, but fair enough. Um, these are for each player color, so there's blue, yellow, red, and white. Looks like the information on them is identical, so the game doesn't appear to be asymmetric in any way. Everyone has the exact same symbols here. What would have been really nice is to have two-sided of these and have them slightly different in some way. That's something I would have preferred. Next, we have wooden components. This is another indication of a Euro game right here. Wooden components and all the player colors. So we're going to just dump this here. And I'm going to dig out one color to figure out what we got. I'm going to use red. So let's pull out all the reds and see what we've got. All right, so here we have all the reds. So first thing we will find is a wooden train. This is a train game in a way. It's a path building game where you are delivering cattle to go out on the train. So we have a wooden train piece. We then have a wooden cube, which I assume goes into uh, this spot on the player board here. Then we have a cowboy meeple, a cow beeple, whatever you want to call it. And then a bunch of discs. Wooden discs, as you've seen in many Euro games, at least it's discs instead of cubes. You got a handful of red discs. These also exist in the other player colors. I'm just going to scoop these up quickly. Hate myself later when I go to play and everything's just loose in the box. So now we have two separate packs of cards. From what I understand, it's just going to be one deck of cards. They do have the cigarette style easy open that is, in fact, easy open. Always appreciated. Look at that. Nice. Nice. So what we have here are cattle cards. It's not going to be a lot to see here from what I understand. Uh, all the same back. Let me show off the back over here. All the same back of the card, which is same as the image on the front cover of the game. Same thing with all these. No, we also have... So we have a couple gray ones here. We'll see what those are in a second. See if there are any more gray. All right, so four gray cards. What do we have for this? So this is probably for start, setup, starting player abilities, because there are four of these only. And I know those are resources you can collect during the game. So this is to await for players to get a different starting resources. Then we have cattle cards, which, as you expect, have cows on them. So you've got pretty standard looking cows. You've got brown cows. Whole bunch of brown cows. Uh, you got Ayrshire cows, which are blue. So I'm not going to throw those onto the, the main pile here for long because we covered. You got West Highland cows. This game is all about collecting sets of cows and delivering them. You got the Texas Longhorn. So these are all color coded in addition to having unique art and having the numbers in the corner. So lots of different things done there to help with any color blindness issues. Um, these, I don't know what they are off the top of my head because, like I said, I just did a short demo of this game, but it's different routes. So you have San Francisco 18. Uh, these all say the same thing. So I'm not sure what those are. Some kind of resource cards. So it's not all cows, all kinds of different resource cards. All right, there, there's a slew of different ones here. 
That is the end of the first deck. We grab the second deck. We have more cows. So we have Jersey cows, Dutch belt cows, Black Angus cows. There's only two of those. Um, I can't even read this one. Guernsey cows. Well, now we're back to more Jersey cows, more Dutch belt cars, more Black Angus, more Jersey. Okay, so this is just keeps repeating. So these are probably, and I just messed them up, which is going to be terrible, like starting hand or something like that. So yes, this entire deck until we get to the very end, again, starts off with the Hollister cows. So I'll probably hate myself later when I find out that these are their starting hands. That's it. That's what you get in the box for Great Western Trail. Different kinds of cards, all with the same backs. And we are going to clean this up. It's not all cows. It should be on the marketing page. I agree. This is going to go horribly. Oh, oh, oh. It's a good thing the camera's facing it. But that wasn't bad. I, I could have been way worse. I only spilled a few. None on the floor. And here is why I hate trough inserts. Right here. Oh, it's terrible. Painful. Great Western Trail. All right, there you have what you get in the box for Great Western Trail. This is the first edition of Great Western Trail from Eggert Spiel. Uh, this is the Canadian printing of this particular game. Everything looks kind of what I expected, some nice quality components. It looks and feels like a Euro game because it is a Euro game. We got lots of cards, lots of wooden bits, lots of cardboard chits. It's kind of what you expect. Cards, chits, and wooden bits. That might be a new tagline for uh, the, my new garage band called the Euro game. Uh, so that is what you get in the box for Great Western Trail. Thank you for joining me. Now, I am Mo Tuzano, the Tabletop Bellhop. You can find me all over the interwebs as Tabletop Bellhop, one word, all over social media and stuff like that. Uh, you can also find more gaming content at tabletopbellhop.com. And if you dig this video, be sure to visit patreon.com slash tabletopbellhop and consider tipping the bellhop. That's it for me tonight. Good night and game on.